All right, good morning. It is 8.15 a.m. on Thursday, the 20th of October. And today you are to be taking your hands-on test number six, which is on chapter 12 in the Muroc text. The email, an email with the text with the test was sent out this morning around 645, so hopefully everybody has it. I want to quickly go over the two problems that are on the test. In the first one, you are to create something, a very simple interface when you look at it. Here's your form. So this is a label that says MD5 hash. Here's a text box. There's a button that says crack. Feel free to add a clear button and or an exit button if you'd like, and if you don't want to, just do it the way it's done here. You put in one of these hashes that is shown here, and if you put in one of the ones that's shown there, okay, then it'll give you the word, in this case, password. All right, so for instance, again, just to show you, and I'll show you my, my uh, copy. All right, this is the one that I wrote. I'm not going to say it's great, it's terrible, or it's anything, but so here it is. Again, I've got a crack, I've got a clear and an exit, and I put a little image there. You don't have to do any of that. If you just have a label here, text box, another label here, and the one button, that suffices. All right, but if I do come in here and run this, and I put in there that, which is what we were given, and I click crack. It says password. In other words, this is the word password after it has after it has been um, run through a program to basically change it from the clear text format that you see right here into more of a hashed or encrypted format, as you see right there. So you're doing it in reverse, you're taking the encrypted one, clicking crack, and you're getting the regular word that goes along with it. OK, so that's the first one. And let's take a quick look at what we were given here. So you will create a password class. It will have two variables in it. This is actually fairly simple. All right, and um, it'll have a string for the raw or the encrypt, you know, basically um, for each one of these, okay? I think that's that's the hash, you know, et cetera. You get the idea, all right? So you'll have two variables. They'll both be strings. One is referred to as underscore raw. The other is referred to as underscore hash. You will have two repeat, you will have two constructors so the constructor is overloaded the first constructor will have nothing passed into it so it's really simple it doesn't look much different than what you see there the second constructor will have in it the raw and the hash passed in you will need to write get routines for the raw and for the hash and you will need to write your own crack password so basically what I ended up doing was I ended up creating a list that, and I populated it with these password objects. All right. And basically I had the hash and then what it meant, the hash and what it meant. So I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten things. I pre-populated the list with those ten elements. It doesn't matter which one you use first. I put the MD5 hash first and then the password. All right, so that's the first one that you have to do. And notice with the crack password, as it says in here, with that particular example, it says that's a method you have to write. And you'll notice it must return a string and it must have a string passed into it. So it's a method in the form, all right? It's a method in the form. So this, as it says there, is not part of this. This is in the form itself. That takes an MD5 hash and returns the raw password. 
if it's in the table and if it's not in the table. So let's just say, I, you know, as an example, I put one, two, three, four. It should have the word fail. So again, one last time. Change your. Give your form a name. Do what we always do in that. Set your accept button. You won't have a cancel button unless you add a clear and, a, and or an exit type of thing. Change the name of your form, change the name of your form text. That's a right up there. That is a label, that is a text box, that is a label. That's really all you need if you want to write it that way. Totally fine. Again, I added that little image that was right there, one similar to it that I found out on the internet. So that's the first one. In the second example, a network scanner is a common tool for finding security gaps in a network. So the idea behind this one, the idea behind this one is, all right, that if I put in this person's IP address, which is my I address, and when I say mine, it's yours, it, it's the local user. These are the routines that are running them. All right, and if you put in Google's, that's the one routine that's running. And if you put in Rankin's, that's the one that's running. All right, so I created a couple things in here, just so you know, I created an array in which I basically put the services in there. All right, and I created this computer class, okay? This computer class, as you can see, it has three instance variables, underscore name, which is a string, underscore IP address, which is a string, and underscore services, which is an integer array. So basically, the values that you see in here. All right, it has one constructor, and that one constructor has in it, it ref basically it gets those three elements that were from above. So it gets in a string representing the name, it gets in a string representing the IP address, and it gets in an integer array representing the services. Okay. So I'm going to run mine in just a second, but as far as the features, the user enters an IP address. So let's look at this. All right, here's the interface. Again, we've got to make sure you change your label. Make sure you set at least your accept button for this, just like you'd set your accept button up here for this. Feel free, as I did if you want to, to have, add a, a clear and an exit button. If you add those, you probably want to set your cancel button. So your accept would be here and your cancel then would be probably your clear. So label. Text box, this thing right here. I think I made that a real a multi line label. I might have made it a multi line text box. I don't know. I don't really care. All right. If you put in 127.0.0.1, as you notice, it has 20, 21, 23, et cetera. So put in all those things. You can set these up in different ways. All right. And if you put in something that doesn't make sense, all right, now notice here they've got 127.0.0.1, and here it says request timed out, all right? Probably you should have put a different value in there, like whatever, you know, just if, since it's a string, if you put in hello, it should say service is none type of an idea. The methods, notice we've got two of them. Scan IP address and show computer. All right, they're put right here. Notice it says it's on the form itself. So, scan IP address, as mentioned there, takes in an IP address and returns the computer with that IP address or null if there isn't any. Show computer takes the results of the scan and displays the information. So, that is this stuff in here, all right? The rubric, you can see how it's set up right here. So again, it supposes, now when it says here tab order is configured, 
To me, that says more than that. For me, the tab order must be configured. The form must be renamed. The form text should be set and a cancel button or an accept button at a minimum. And if you've got more than one, a can, a, a, an accept and a cancel button. So I'm going to check for all those. All right, that's what the five points is worth. Laying the thing out as expected is five points. <clears throat> Control and variable names by now, you know, constants should be uppercase if you use any. You know, you should just follow naming conventions. If you do all that, you get five, 10, 15, 20 points before you've even started. The key, some of the key things in here, the UI implements the requested functionality. In other words, when you put in that encrypted password or that encrypted, you know, hash that's in there and you press the crack button, it should show you the equivalent hash, you know, unhashed or whatever, the thing that it represents as I showed you. That's 10 points or 15 points, I'm sorry. The password class is set up correctly, that's 10 points. The crack password method is set up correctly, that's five points. And then finally with the other one, again, Controls are laid out as expected. That's four points. The tab order, again, I do want to make sure on this one and in the one up here, I want to make sure that everybody understands. Tab order means multiple things. Tab order is set and set in, you know, in a, a way that makes sense. Form is renamed. Form text is set as shown. Accept button is set. Windows start position is set on both of these. Windows start position is set because I forgot to mention that earlier. And if there's only one button, the accept is set. If there are two buttons, the accept and the cancel are set. Again, the control names follow the naming conventions and the variable names. All right. The computer class is set up correctly. That's 10 points right there. OK, you set up the Scan IP address as shown and the show computer as shown. Let me run mine for you. And then we will put this to rest. So this is what mine looks like. And again, that is a text box and I made a multi line text box. So I've got in mine. I added the clear button. You don't have to, but I've got in mine here a label. A text box, two buttons. A label, a label, another label and another text box. So when I run this and I put in here 127.0.0.1 and I click scan, it gets my desktop. It reproduces what I put in there. It's got the word services and it grabs all those services. Now if I clear it and I put in something that doesn't exist and I click scan, it comes back request timed out. It repeats that again, services and none. I will be online this morning. I will be online this morning from now 830 until 1155. My afternoon class, I'm going to lecture probably for a good hour, but I'll be online after that. I will be online tonight beginning at about 5 30 p.m. let's say 6 p.m. all right i need a couple hour break when i finish it you know all of my day till i can start up but i'll be online from six i'll try to stay on till 10. all right feeling a little under the weather this morning so i may go to bed at nine but i'll do the best i can to stay up until 10. again any questions jp scott at rankin.edu and i can set up with you a team's meeting on an as needed basis. All right, so with that, I think that is everything. And I will talk to you on Monday.